over it. There we go. All right. Check these out, friends. Check these out. Let's fire this back up again. Ryan, if you do the honors, that'd be awesome. How's that looking through the, the viewfinder, guys? Is that okay? <coughs> All right, this is a little bit dated, but it does not matter. It does not, oh, sorry. Let me get the other one. Oh, oh, did that work? We got a little bit. Oh, you, you, you adjust it, and then I'll tighten it down. All right, you're good. Perfect, Michael. Thank you, sir. Here, it's dated, but whatever you learned from January 3rd, 2000, you can easily apply to right now. Obama job approval reaches 50% for the first time since spring. Okay, there's a lot to deal with in this in this in this article, and a lot of it is just talking about their their their, their random sampling methodology. But if you look down at the bottom there, it says with a random sample of 1,544 adults uh, living in all 50 states. So they've given you a fixed sample size. You can assume they, they ask them yes or no, yes or no, good or bad job. So it checks off. We've got a simple random sample, fixed number of trials, two outcomes. Again, large enough. We'll get back to that momentarily here. It checks. It checks. Do you believe that his job approval is at 50%? based on that margin of error. Do you believe it's at 50% based on that margin of error, which is right there? What do you think? Is it 50%? Guaranteed. Is it guaranteed 50%? Can't say that, can we? Best we can say is we are, where is it, where is it? They didn't mention confidence. Oh, there it is. 95% confident that it's 50% Plus or minus 4%. Might it be higher than 50%? Could be as high as? 54. Could be as low as? 46. Therefore, can't say it's at 50, can we? And I also question the first time since spring. Because what if it was 49% in the last poll, plus or minus 4%? Could it have been 50%? Yes. It could have been, couldn't it have been, right? Some of you might be wondering, why are you so nitpicky about one or two percentage points? That seems a little silly, doesn't it? Until you realize that one or two percentage points might be hundreds of thousands of people represented in the population, and that might be significant. Often is. Fair enough? Here's one way to think about it. This is a graphic some of my students like. There's your confidence interval, 46 to 54 percent. That's what the plus or minus four percent added into it. A lot of students think of the true parameter. Remember, this is p hat. 0.5 is p hat. The true parameter of whatever Obama's per, uh, 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 proportion is, is in there 95% of the time. So think of it as a little fish that's swimming around. Because honestly, you don't know where it is. It could be directly in the middle, it could be on the left side, it could be on the right side. So since the fish can swim on either side of 50%, that fish stands for the parameter. And that fish stands for the unknown of where it actually is. That's why you can't say it's 50 could be low, could be high. Is that believable? You guys buying that logic? Yeah, ish, ish, get there, good. Here's another one. Again, this one's even older. But again, it's not so much the age of the news clips, but <coughs> what's contained in this. Go ahead and read that. Pick out the important parts. What are some of the important parts? Question, Chris. He's saying, what is a maximum margin of sampling error? This is the way Rasmussen talks about a margin of error. There's sampling error, maximum margin of sampling error, margin of error, M-O-E, M-E-E, all these terms mean the same things, plus or minus. So what do you think? According to the poll, 34% think things are getting better. 39% think things are getting worse. Do you think a higher percentage think things are getting worse than getting better? Yes. Good. Why do you think that? Because Danielle, there's only a 2% margin of error on this poll, which means they must have sampled more people than in the previous poll, yes? yes? There are our two confidence intervals. Notice how narrow compared to the last ones. We've got a 32 to 36 and a 37 to 41, which means if you envision the fishies in the tanks, what can't they do? They can't touch, which means the right tank, which is the war will get worse, is higher then the world will get better tank, always, even, even if you put the fishies here. At the lowest end of the high and the highest end of the low, they're still 
This is called a minimum measurable difference. We'll come back to that. A minimum measurable difference of 1%. And you might not care about a 1% difference. But if that's voters, that might represent hundreds of thousands of people at 1% difference. So apply it over a larger. You remember, this is giving you a snapshot of a very large population, potentially. Is that fair? Yeah. This is good. What be so far? Go ahead, Chris. So because the fishes can't touch, you can assume that maybe that most voters don't. Think. You can think that. You can say that a higher percentage say it's going to get worse than get better. You can't say what that percentage is. You can't say that 39% think it's going to get better. That was in your sample. That was your peak. So you can't say the proportion of voters say it's going to get worse is 39%, but you can say that it's higher than the proportion of voters that say it's going to get better. Does that make sense? You can't assign a concrete number to it, but since the intervals don't touch at all, you can say that getting worse is higher than getting better. Because even at its lowest, it's still higher than the other one at its highest. Does that make sense? Is that fair? That's a great question. Do you guys catch the question Chris asked? We can't assign a concrete value to it, but we can say that the red interval is definitely statistically significantly higher than the green interval. Great question. Fantastic question. Ask me, ask me more, Rosie. Um, it's kind of not necessarily to do with this, but like on the quiz, you have a thing where it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. Are we going to figure out? Wait, the opposite. What do you mean, say the opposite? Well, you, like, you don't give us a sample size. The whole, give, me, give me two more minutes. We're getting there. We're almost there, my friend. Is that, I end with that. Okay. And good, good people that already said that. Here's another one. Even older, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how old these are. It's timeless errors made by news media. <laughs> there you go. Let's see. Muslims are now worse off than the Dalit caste, the untouchables. 52% of Muslim men are unemployed. 47% of Dalit men unemployed. The LA Times, it's just, it's just a caste system. Don't even worry about that. It's a definition that you don't have to worry about. The claim was, though, that Muslims are worse off than the Dalit caste. There's no because 52% is higher than 47%. So clearly, they're worse off, right? Mm -hmm. The only way you can make that claim is if you ask who. Everybody. Every single Muslim man and every single Delhi caste man. And then you would know it's 52 to 47, but you can't do that. That was a sample. But what's missing, Cassie? Okay. The margin of error. So what I did was I went ahead and slapped some in for you. So I said, assuming those percentages are true, 52 and 47 percent, let's sample 100 guys each. That's what the intervals would look like over 100. The margin of error would be roughly, let's see how wide that is. This is like 37 percent over to like 57 percent. That's a 10 that's percent a margin of error, isn't it? Up 10, down 10. That's a wide, wide margin of error. But of course it's a wide margin. It's only 100 people surveyed. It's a hugely wide margin of error, right? So what do you think? Does this support the LA Times that Muslim men are worse off than the, the, the Dali cast because of a... No! How come? Well, Gail, go ahead. They overlap completely. You can't tell the fish. He's swimming back and forth. You can't tell where the fish are. They could be this way. But you can't tell. Okay, so let's, let's ask more people. Let's go, let's go survey more. Here's uh, 500. Can we decide that Muslims are worse off than Dali here? What did happen to the intervals, though, friends? What happened to the intervals? They did get narrower, okay? How about now? There's a thousand. It looks like they just got wider, but they didn't. I changed the scaling on the horizontal axis. They're much, much narrower. Now they're going, they're about, there's about a 3% margin of error there. Can we decide now? No, how about 2,000 people? Now, if, if, if we survey 2,000 each and got the same percentages, 52 and 47, that's a big if, isn't it? Because what if we did it, then it changes. But assuming they did about 2,000 people and we got 52 and 47, now I can support the claim that the Muslim caste is worse off than the Dalit caste. Now, I can. So in reading that, you could say well, that's not true unless you surveyed 2,000 people. Exactly. You can find a minimum that you have to survey to, to, to make it true. Yes, hopefully you could back check the, the survey to find out. And you it usually, I'll show you why. The sweet spot's usually 1,068. Why? We'll get back to that momentarily. So the question now becomes is, how many should you survey? How many should you survey? Ryan, would you mind if you don't mind, my friend? How many should you survey? So 2,000 clearly did it in that case, didn't it? I'm going to offer this quickly because I want to have a video proof for you guys because this is one of the things I've learned never ever to prove in class. 
What you essentially have to do is undo this formula. <laughs> this is what you talk about, Rosie. You say do it backwards. I love the way you said that, actually. I'm thinking about it. Here, I hesitate to even write it down because you'll never ever do it by hand. Do you want to see the formula for sample size or just see the results of the program that I wrote for you? Results. Results? <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what. I'll make you a deal. I will have a video uploaded ASAP, if not Friday earlier, on why this program works. Essentially, what you do is you take this formula and you solve for n for a given margin of error. So it's some algebra. So I will post the video ASAP for you on YouTube, linked off your homework page so you can get to it, I promise you. To find a sample size? To find a sample size. You have to, you have to pick two things. I will write down this, though. There are two things you have to pick. To find a sample size, You have to pick two things. First thing you have to pick is the confidence level. But we're almost always going to pick what for that? Almost always, 0.95 or 95%, yes. But the other thing you have to pick, which is a little bit odd, a little bit odd maybe, is the maximum margin of error allowable. And the reason I say it this way is because it brings up something Kaylee said a few moments ago, and I say a few moments, 45 minutes ago or so. <laughs> Remember when you said, I'm 100% confident between a zero and 100%? Right. Well, that's a margin of error of 50%. That's ridiculous. Why would you ever want a margin of error that wide? So what you can say to yourself is, okay, how much of a margin of error do I want? Can I accept 4%? Can I accept 3%? Can I accept 2.5%? And you'll notice, as you change those, it changes the requirements of the sample size. So you have to pick these two things. I promised you a video where I do the der derivation for you, but I will give this to you now for nothing, <coughs> and we'll break class a few minutes early so I can share this with you guys. It's a program I wrote. Your TIs actually don't, don't have this. I wrote it for you instead. I called it... So, I didn't give it to you yet. Actually, if you had me in 243, you might have this on your machine already. I try to give you guys everything in 243 if you had me. So if you go to your program menu, your program menu, okay, and you go down and find one called SSZE calc. S -s 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 calc. Sample size, I'm limited to eight variables with 1986 technology. Sample size calc, if you guys have it, that's good. You grab that bad boy, it asks you for confidence. Go ahead and put in 95, or 0.95, doesn't matter, it'll accept either and then put in the margin of error that you're willing to accept as a decimal. So if you're willing to accept 3%, you will put in 0.03, and it will tell you to go sample 1,068 people. That's your minimum cutoff. That's your minimum cutoff of a sample size. If you get more, it's gonna be even better. If you get more, it's even better. But if you sample 1,068, you will have no more of a margin of error than 3%. It might be smaller, but it can't be bigger. And I'll explain all this in the video. I can't explain it in five minutes well. Okay? If you run it again, suppose you still want 95% confidence, but you want no more than 2% margin of error, what's going to happen to your sample size, do you think? If you want less of a margin of error, what's going to happen to your sample size? It has to get higher. You have to get more people to shrink it down. Remember, margin of error going down means the interval's getting tighter. Have to have more people. Careful, please be careful with percentages. Don't type in if you want 3%.3. Whoops. Don't, ah, crap, sorry. Don't type in, uh, <laughs> here we go. Don't type in 0.3 for, for, for a margin of error for 3%. For because it will give you a number. You only need 11 people <laughs> if you want to make sure that you only want 30, plus or minus 30% what point three is. So be careful. It's very easy. And remember, I told you, your TI will always give you results. Sometimes they're completely bogus. Please, Gail E. So did you say that this SSZE calc It's a program is... I'll give you. Okay. Yeah, so I have first question on the quiz, we can't do... You can't do... Well, you can. You can do it algebraically, but let's just... I'll give you this after the quiz. We'll break a little bit early here today. Okay. Okay? Is, it, is, this, is this... You see what's going on here, friends? So if you had me in class, you've already got this. Use it in good health. Use it in good health. If you haven't had me in class, let's break now. Can you guys, and if you, if you need the program, come, come to me, I'll give it to you. Bring questions on 
that your first homework assignment, which is called estimating a population proportion, actually the first one is central limit theorem. Skip that. I'll make a note of this in the schedule page. So bring questions next class. We'll start class with estimating the population proportion. You know how to find everything on that website where the homework pages are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Find that. It's a second homework assignment. I'll provide a link to it. If you need, uh, I didn't make it a quiz. I should have had that. Just hang on to it. Hang on to it for reference. We'll get you plenty more. Who needs a program? Yes, we need it. Yeah. Let's share. Share these bad boys. Uh, no, no, no. It's even easier than that. It's not. You press second. What is that? It's here. Yeah, it's perfect. I send you a note. I'm going to send you two. Goff and that. Because we use Goff and that too. You should have it. Boom, boom. There you go. Yeah. Oh, you, again, I'll give you everything you need once you come in. I have to look at my computer, but I don't have any six personally. What you didn't care of, though. Would one of you guys mind turning the camera off to so we can save some battery? That'd be awesome. What's up, Jason?